G'day guys, thank you for tuning in to another True Footy Podcast. Before we get into it with a new, very exciting guest, I do need to give you our sponsorship message for today's episode. The holidays are here, and have you made your wish list yet? Well, the sponsor of the True Footy Podcast today is the number one wish for gift of the year. The best in below the belt men's grooming, Manscaped is here to help you ensure you're looking after both your nose hair and your manhood with the new performance package. Now, we get it. Before now, manscaping has been a little bit of an arduous task, but now with this new performance package 3.0, you've got the ultimate men's hygiene package and the perfect gift idea. Now imagine opening a box on Christmas morning that says your balls will thank you as you see all the most sought after gadgets and scents a man can look for. Now primarily the bundle includes the lawnmower 3.0, which is the best trimmer on the market for your balls, butt and body. But excitingly, the package also includes the new Weed Whackers. This is a new waterproof ear and nose trimmer that uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. My God, that was a mouthful. Now you might not have thought about trimming your nose hair before, but 79% of partners polled said that long nose hair is a turn off. So what are you doing? Why not use the best tools for the job right here with Manscaped? The dads can't stop talking about this. The teens secretly buy it and women will love you for it. Tis the season of Manscaped, so get yourself, your mates, your dad, your brother, the best gift at all, the Manscaped Performance Package. Now before we go, let's not also forget the little liquid formulations you also get in the Performance Package. I'm talking specifically the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner to maximize your hygiene routine. Now if you do jump on the Performance Package now, you will get two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxes and the Shed Travel Bag. The Performance Package is the best value that Manscaped have to offer offer and it is hot off the shelves. And the best part of all of this is because they sponsor True Footy, you can go to their website, use our code and get 20% off their products and free shipping. So don't forget, go to manscaped.com, use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, and you will get 20% off their products and free shipping. Go whack your weeds and make Santa proud. Now enough about all that, let's go talk about football for quite a while. All right, lads, here we are again for True Footy Podcast 66, I think it is. Execute Podcast 66. Oh, have you had that? I'll see myself. Ready yeah. to go? I have had that ready yeah, to go. It's a very vague Emperor Palpatine reference for yeah. those who don't know. <laughs> Today we're uh, joined by a very special guest. We've got an AFL draft prospect with us, Jack Avery from the Claremont Footy Club. How are you, Jack? Yeah, good thanks. Yourself? Yeah, good thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. Um, no I know this is like a kind of an awkward time for you in your life right now obviously with the draft coming up in the next couple of weeks it was meant to have already happened um like yeah. at the start of the year it's usually in late november but now it's going to be the sort of early december um i guess the first question is how are you feeling just generally are you pretty nervous stressed at the moment yeah yeah a bit nervous and stressed a few sleepless nights tough really and yeah but yeah you're just unsure what's going to happen so for sure man are you um are like, are you doing anything to try and take your mind off it, or just working a bit and I'm um, yeah. starting to get into a bit of golf, so that sort of takes your mind off stuff. And then, cool. yeah, you're just doing usual training on and off. So, yeah, yeah. any good at golf? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty like shit ass, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty crap as well. I've been playing at um, Mount Pleasant with my brother-in-law. He's been insisting we play. My score is literally getting worse yeah, every yeah, single it's game. Hard. It's not, yeah, the finest, but yeah, yeah, it's good to be out in the park. That is good, man. Yeah. Um, because you did you do your final year of school this year as well? Uh, last year. Last year. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, that's good. Year. So you've had that. At least you've had sort of one less thing to think about, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, so the school wasn't an issue for this year, so yeah, yeah graduated lovely. last year. Yeah, nice one. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so I guess for those who um, watching this may not be aware of, I guess who you are as a as a player. Um, do you want to give us a little rundown of the sort of play you are at, at Claremont? Um, the position I like to play is centre half back. So yeah, yeah. just like to. Yeah, play there and read the ball from defence. Yeah, nice no, one. So like intercepting. Yeah, intercepting yeah. and yeah, hopefully just use my left foot out of defence. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Oh, lefty. Yeah, lefty. Ooh. So yeah, something a bit different. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. There's been a few good uh, tall backs come out of Claremont in yeah. the uh, in the last yeah, it's few been, years. Yeah, a few really good ones. So. Yeah, nice one. Um, so one thing I do want to ask you about the clarifiers, and this is something um. I did actually post on Bigfooty. I said that I'm interviewing Jack this week. And I, I said, what's the first thing you want me to ask? A lot of them are curious about your height. Yeah. Now, set the record straight here. You're list, listed at 189 centimetres. Yeah. Um, and how many kilos are you listed at? Do you know? Um, 82. 82. And what are you actually? 80, around 89, 90 for kilos. And then I'm at least hopefully 190. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because they've done you dirty there. Because yeah, uh, yeah. you're a lot more AFL ready than you would think, like just reading that profile. Yeah. Because when I looked at that and then I, I sort of saw you today, 
I was well, expecting to see you today. I was thinking I'm probably going to see like a kid, like yeah, you know, yeah. an 18 year old kid. But you're about 10 kilos on me, taller than me as well. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah part of the primary size throughout since season's been done. So yeah, it's been gotcha. good to get in the gym and yeah, yeah, lovely, lovely. Um, Lenny, I guess do you have any sort of insight to add around Jack's game that he might not have covered that sort of player he is because obviously you guys um, have a bit of a working relationship to, relationship together um. yeah so obviously with my role my job's to go down and have a watch of the young players um, but the reason I actually know Jack is because we both work at Beast all together in the oh, right. stock department and um, yeah ever since I've really gone to know him I've really seen a real professional side to him um, you know he's always willing to learn he's always wanting to improve his game even different aspects you know he's all he's always been asking me a bit about diet sleep patterns um so i think he really is a sponge and that's really going to hold him in good stead at senior football level that's awesome yeah are you um because we were talking about a, a little bit off air as well you've kind of had a year where 2019 was a little bit quieter you didn't yeah, you yeah. didn't play for claremont um and then 2020 um by comparison has been a huge year you've kind of had a meteoric rise what do you put that down to? Have you been like maybe sort of putting a lot more effort into it this year? Or yeah, what, for what's... sure. Just hard work and like there's certain goals you got to reach to play at Colts footy compared to school footy. So mm. just improving your 2K time trial and yeah, just like eating well, sleeping well, and then just yeah, going to the you got to put on size to play at yeah. high levels. So yeah, just the, those sort of patterns. Interesting. Is maybe this is a good one for Lenny as well. Like. Is there more of an emphasis on draftees to get bigger these days? Because I think there was, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I feel like back in the five, ten years ago, you didn't see like real big 18-year-olds getting drafted. I think I remember reading or watching something where someone was comparing in Victoria, do you undertake weights training at a younger age? So they're sort of beefing up at about 16 and WA did it later. But I'm looking at Jack now and I'm like, this guy looks like he's been doing weights for years. Um, is, is that a big focus now? Oh, look, just looking at the boys... Um that I certainly want to know what's uh, in the chickens they're eating because they're getting a lot bigger. Um, probably, because when I went through, everyone was probably the same size. Everyone was skinny, like no one was really big. Whereas probably when I first started really watching Colts footy, which was 2016, and you saw guys like Sammy Powell Pepper who were just men at the mm. age of 18. And it's really come through, like even looking at Jack now, um, you know, he's quite strong yeah. in the upper body as well. Yeah, lovely. That's cool. Um, I guess, is there a sort of player that you, I know both of you can sort of answer this, it'd be interesting to see if you have different answers, but is there a player like in the AFL that you sort of look at and try and model your game yeah, on in particular? Yeah, for sure. Low-key player, I'd say Charlie Ballard from Gold Coast. Oh, really? Yeah, that like, is a low-key player. Yeah, but if it's a high-profile, I'd say Nick Haynes. So gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere in between those two players, I'd love to be. Yeah, awesome. Ballard is a good Yeah, good he's, he's so underrated for who he is. Yeah, yeah. He does, so. True. Um, I guess touching on that, you did mention before we started the podcast you're a Gold Coast Suns fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, how in the hell does that happen? Because you might be the first Gold Coast fan I've met in person. <laughs> yeah, um, Dad used to know a guy McKinnon used to play with him, so oh. he was coaching at the time there. Yeah. We just went to a closed training session and saw the players and stuff. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were just such nice guys. and Lovely. Yeah, I just saw the work they put in, really liked them, so... How long ago was that? You sort of six, seven years okay. ago. Yeah. yeah. Was that up there or de- yeah, up, up there, there. Yeah, up in Gold Coast? So. Were the rumours about their facilities early days true, sort of thing? Or? I didn't okay. see the yeah. facilities. Or no, yeah. I just saw the outside training yeah. track. So yeah, you're not allowed yeah. in there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. It does sound like Gold Coast is a much better place to end up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like back great club and great lifestyle. So. Yeah, yeah. Some good young talent going there. Your sure. Matty Rouse, your Andersons, yeah, and maybe yeah. a couple of hmm. other big names as well coming hmm. in the future. Um, do you consider yourself a true key position player? Like, do you, like, because you say you play centre half back. Um, yeah. Is is the is that the position you want to play at AFL level? Yeah, for sure. But I think um, in terms of key defender, you have to be around one ninety five mm. plus. So yeah. I think push myself onto a flank or back pocket would be suitable, or even a run on the midfield. So yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, just adding on to that, yeah. um, even if he is only 190, 191, he does play a lot bigger than what a 190, 191 centimetre player does. Yeah, um, okay. So I think a good comparison for him might be someone like Tommy Dude from Adelaide. You yeah. Know, Tommy, I think, is only 189, 190. But true. Sisley's a lot similar as well. Yeah, true. So yeah. even if he's not at that 195 centimetre, I suppose, height, yeah, um, he makes up for it in a lot of other areas. Interesting, interesting. I do have to ask as well, because you're around that height 
um, that one only one where people are like, oh, can he play midfield? Yeah, yeah, Do you have yeah. any interest in playing midfield? Hopefully, the, I think the stamina is a big one to yeah. improve on. Like they run six twenties. Yeah. For two k, so I, th- I think if I do improve my stamina, I could hopefully squeeze in there for sure. That's cool. Is it something you want to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Coming yeah. up against like competitive beasts like yeah. Crips and stuff would be just <laughs> such a good opportunity. So. True. Yeah, yeah. It, gives, it gives you a point of difference as well yeah, in terms of getting sure. a game, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess, what about some weaknesses um, in your own game that you'd like to improve on? Um, yeah, my right foot, like off the non-dominant side, probably is a big one I want to improve on. Interesting. Yeah, that's um, it's almost like overrated. Like lefties yeah. are generally so good on their left that they don't use their yeah, right. They yeah. generally get away with it. Like <laughs> it does yeah, seem that. Some way. people say you don't need a right if you got a left, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely got to have both mm. feet. Yeah. Have you had? Um, sort of much communication with clubs around this time of year. I take it you have because the draft's right around the corner. Do they give you that kind of feedback as well in terms of like recruiters? Or? Sort of. You sort of just ask the feedback at the end of a call or whatever. Gotcha. And yeah, yeah they just say, um, like just your like, athleticism hopefully mm. bring something to improve on. So yeah, I okay. think if I improve like my 20 metre sprint and stuff, yeah, I can really go a long way hopefully. Yeah, interesting. I'm um, just adding to um, the skill component that Jack's touched on. If he improves it as well, what then happens it forces forwards to actually have to defend him and it can yes. throw them off their game so when you look at someone like a Jeremy McGovern a Darcy Moore a Jeremy Howe because they can kick it so well out of defence it forces their opponents to actually defend them rather than thinking about getting into space and becoming dangerous they're almost thinking we've actually got to tag him not he tags us so I think if Jack does improve uh, his kicking it's still a pretty good kick at the moment but if he can make it that touch more dangerous then suddenly it adds another uh, string to his bow yeah for sure does it it seems to be like a greater emphasis emphasis on skills than maybe there was at the start of the decade like because i've been following the draft casually for a long time and i remember there was a phase where um athletic specimens was the call of the day sort of thing yeah i think it was around that period where michael barlow made a name for himself and uh joe watson was the best midfielder in the game and um there was like I don't know if you were following the draft so much back then because you're a little bit younger than me, Lenny. Yeah, you? I was. I probably started casually watching the draft in 2012, 2013. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was around that era, and then it seems like there's a big shift towards skills. Is that something you would agree with? Like it's becoming more and more important. Yeah, I think so. I think also because if you get really skillful players in your team, you look at, I suppose, Hawthorne between 2013, and 2015. They just used to carve teams up with their skills. True. And like, there is only so much a good work rate can get you uh, in AFL or senior WAFL football, but if you really can improve your skills, it then, as I was saying before, it then forces people and coaches to go, we've actually got to put time into that player mm. rather than going, oh, we can just work around them sort of True. thing. True. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but you, you 2020 was huge. Um, if I'm not mistaken, were you second in the BNF for your team? Yeah, yeah. Colts centre half back of the year, third in coaches award, and uh, and then you played in the All Star matches. I guess first of all, what was it? What was it like playing those All Star matches? Yeah, it was a great experience. I was actually sitting out for the first week due to an ankle injury, and only got to play half a game in the second game. But yeah, just to put on the jumper was a great honour. and that's my cool. first time, so that's awesome. That's awesome. I do have to ask though, like because it's 2020, it's a weird year. Did you did you feel a little robbed this year because you know? There's no championships and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I know you got to play in the in the team game, but I just I'm sort of want to know about your like emotions this year. Yeah, in terms yeah. Of how that, how I was just went. like yeah. happy to play footy. Imagine being stuck over in Victoria. So true. Certainly. Yeah, even just to smash out ten games and a few state games was yeah just great. That's a good point. Yeah, and it seems like you made those games count as well. We were yeah. saying like this could be. Uh, we were saying in the podcast, Lenny, where um, this could be a tricky year where like you obviously get nine games and if you don't play well then you've kind of missed an opportunity but if you do play well in the in the nine or ten games like a Logan McDonald or like yourself this year um, then you can actually make a really big name for yourself and it seems like you've put your best foot forward this year so that must be pretty satisfying yeah yeah for sure it's yeah right that's cool I think man. the big recognition for someone like Jack is when the coaches rate him as the third best player in the comp wow because yeah. I think when the coaches they also have to look at how do they impact the game mm. how do they impact each contest did we have to tag him in a game? Did he completely dominate us? And Because sometimes with umpires, they can get a bit sucked into the flashy players, whereas the coaches might go, he was really hard working today. He mm. deserves some votes. So 
I think for Jack to come third in the coaches uh, award is quite a feather in the cap for himself. For sure, especially if you're a defender. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It's not yeah, a. They don't usually get much recognition. So exactly. Yeah, exactly. Have that it was good. It's good though. That's why I kind of like the coaches award in the um, in the AFL as well because yeah. then you, like obviously the Brownlow, I think we can say is a midfielders award. So like. Your lucky Neil is always going to win that. You're not going to get a Nick Haynes sort of uh, surprising. But the coaches award is one where you often see um, the like role players getting rewarded more. Someone like yourself as well. So it's good that the coaches are giving you the recognition for being that that kind of player. That's awesome. And I think um, that's why Paul Rose actually said it's probably the most special award in the game. Yeah. As well. Yeah, I would, I would You've had a similar that. sentiment to that, haven't you? You always yeah. rate the coaches as your most prestigious. Yes, and uh, my opinion is obviously <laughs> worth gold. <laughs> no, but uh, that's just my opinion as well because um, I think the coaches have a good perception of that. So that is a really good feather in your cap. Um, so because obviously you improved so much this year, do you feel like you've still got a lot in that in terms of um, you know the improvements just starting? Where, where do you yeah, feel? Yeah, for sure. I think this is just the start of my career. Um, yeah. Whether it's at Waffle Footy or... AFL football so I think yeah I do have a lot of improving to do and like this is just the first year of me so hopefully there's a lot more that's awesome yeah I like that attitude um uh, I guess it's been a big year for you what's what's been the best moment of it so far um probably just making the grand final yeah having team success was great we were underrated at the start of the year so so to finish top of the ladder and then Make it to a grand final is a great honour as a team. So. Yeah, that's cool. You played well in the grand final, didn't you? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was all right. It was a bit disappointing getting smashed. Yeah. So I, yeah, I was overall happy with my performance. Yeah, I was going to say, surely it's a bittersweet moment where... Um, I think if, if you weren't in your draft year, maybe a bit different. Like, obviously, playing in a grand final <coughs> and getting slaughtered would be pretty... Like, a horrible feeling, but... There, there would have had to have been some satisfaction to say, okay, yeah. it didn't go the way we wanted, but at least I put my best yeah, foot forward. Yeah, for sure. You can only do as much as you can. That's what I felt I did on the day. So, yeah, to get smashed was, wasn't the best outcome. But Yeah, okay. That's, yeah, fair enough. I was gonna, the next question was going to be, what was your toughest moment in footy? Would it probably be the grand final? Or have you had maybe some obstacles throughout? Yeah, probably, yeah you always have setbacks going through like junior days. People saying you're not good enough, so... Yeah, just to really? perform at that level. Interesting. Who, who told you you weren't good enough? Oh, you just like hear it from a lot. Really? A lot there, a lot of people like in and out of conversations, and you've got brothers that have mates and stuff. So really, yeah, yeah interesting. So is that is that giving you a bit of a chip on your shoulder? Yeah, is that yeah. yeah I was like? playing two years above with my brother and like some of his mates just yeah came across the wrong way. So wow. Yeah. Is, is your brother pretty good? Uh, yeah, he's coming back to Claremont this year. So oh, yeah, nice yeah, it should be good to see him. Yeah, interesting. Come through. Yeah, you'd want your, well, you'd want your brother to be good if your mates are chipping yeah, you and yeah. you're like potentially yeah, going to get chipped. I think they've eased off a bit now. But. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's you cool. put them in their place. Yeah, I yeah. tried to. Yeah. <laughs> um, a good question I like to ask footy players is um, the biggest spray you've ever had. Have you ever copped a big spray during a footy footy game or not so much? No, I don't think I've had no? it. No, not, that's a, good. not a huge one. Yeah. Must yeah, I can't been. remember the last time. Yeah, fair oh, enough. Oh, I think oh, Peel Thunder wasn't the prettiest game. Oh, really? Yeah, I, yeah none of us defenders were manning up on <laughs> our fours. And yeah, Matty Angus has just come in. and Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, have you, I guess, because like, there's like, must be like a little bit of a fraternity around um, kids who might get drafted this year. Like, yeah. have you made some pretty good friends out of this experience? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You meet all like the state boys. You only get like a short opportunity with them, but... I think yeah. the real friends come from just like at Claremont, mm. players like, like Joel Weston and yeah, Logan Young and stuff. So meeting people like that throughout this year has been great. Yeah. Are they, uh, I guess this is a good question for Lenny as well. Like, Are there many Claremont boys in the frame to, to get picked up this year? Oh, certainly. And um, as Jack alluded to before, when you have such good team success, you're more likely to have True. more players at your club looked at. Um, and he's just mentioned two really good prospects in Jolie Weston and uh, Logan Young. So Yeah, I was going to slip in the quick question as a Dockers fan. What do you think of Joel as a quick yeah, aside? Yeah, he, he's so good. Yeah, he's got speed and yeah, he's made for this modern game. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully he goes a long way. Awesome. Is it, do you guys kind of bond over the fact that, you know, you're all facing this draft together? Like, is it something you yeah, guys yeah. talk about? There's a few conversations it? you have here and there, like yeah. how do you feel and stuff, but... Yeah, we try and just stay, stay away from footy when yeah. we can, but usually just going for a kick in, in the gym with him and stuff. So That yeah, must jo- help. Yeah, Joel's been really good. 
Awesome. That must help, yeah, because, like, I was thinking if you're, like, a... Let's say you're, like, the only good kid in Hobart, like, um, that's potentially going to get drafted. It'd probably be a bit lonely, yeah, but obviously yeah, you, you've got sure. a, a teammates who are probably all Even the same. Even just about questions and stuff, yeah, there's yeah. always someone to go to. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I guess getting back to uh, 2020 and in, in this year in general, like... It must have been a stressful year, obviously, as I've alluded to, just because of the uncertainty. Because, um, you know, earlier in the year, we, like, footy stopped. The, yeah. the VFL never came back. Um, and at one point, we weren't sure if the AFL was going to come back. And then the same thing with the waffle. It didn't look like it was going to come back. How was that time for you? Were you thinking, oh, shit, like, what's going to happen here? Or were you relaxed about it? What, what were your emotions around that time? Yeah, of course you can't change what's happened. So it's a sort of, like, sudden stuff. But mm. you just try and do the things you can control, which is going for runs and trying to stay fit. And I was working full-time at the time. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just hoping footy would come back and eventually did. So That's cool. Yeah, like you said, you're, you're lucky in a sense because the Vic boys didn't get, yeah, a, yeah, get exactly. a gig at all. So, you know, that, that worked out quite well. Um, did you... Did you hit the gym during that time? Like, yeah, is that... I got a few um, weights off gum tree, but yeah, they, oh, lovely, they weren't yeah. the heaviest. But True, yeah. there's no gyms and stuff. Yeah, there's no, there's no gyms at all, so yeah. Could you go to the club? No. Yeah, of course, yeah, because of coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't <laughs> that little do snag. anything. So you'd you have been able to get any gym equipment from you the club? You could have, but I didn't. Uh, gotcha. So I just thought mm. I'd sort it out myself. So. Was AFL on the radar for you at that early? Like, I guess the other way to ask that is... Um, how how long have you been thinking about AFL as a potential career? When did it become on the radar for you? Yeah, for sure. It's always been on your mind. You always want to play there as like a kid and growing up. But I think having the reality of like playing at school footy, like you just build a bit of confidence. And then I just went into Colts footy with like no filter this year, pretty much. And it's yeah. just like whatever happens, happens. Like you can only perform as well as you can. So yeah, that's yeah, that's my awesome. journey. No, that's good, man. I. And then the other question I ask is like the communication around from the AFL. There's obviously so much uncertainty and I think it's affecting the entire industry right now. We yeah. know that um, like draft period came and went. Um, the draft is next week. We only just got a draft date, <laughs> yeah. which, uh, which shows like obviously how much they're struggling a little bit with it, which I guess is understandable. Um, and then, you know, we see players in the, in the trade period now, heaps have been delisted. Yeah. Well before the clubs know how many players they can hold for next year. Yeah. Um, I guess as a on the on the flip side of that, as a draftee, um, the uncertainty around list sizes and stuff like, have you felt like you've been in the loop, or has it just kind of been blind this year? Just you're always in like the loop with stuff that you're hearing from social media and stuff, right. but you're honestly not sure what's going to happen. So. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have any more insight than anyone else. No, nah, no difference than anyone crossed. else. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's probably the most disappointing part because I think in the perfect world, uh, and obviously we're not in the perfect world, but you would have hoped that probably just before the trade period that they would have said, right, this is going to be the list sizes for next year. Um, and then that way it then really does allow clubs to actually plan for 2021 and beyond. Mm. Yeah, I guess there's so many, um, so much for them to go through. I guess it's just such an awkward time. Like I, on the one hand, I do think we've done well to get the season we have. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's a positive that um, we got a season, we got a grand final and, um, you know, hopefully we get a fairly normal season this year as well. But on the other side of it, you think, gee, these poor kids that, or even just existing players, have no idea if they got a job next year because because of the communication, I guess. So, yeah, that must have been a pretty awkward time for you. Um, but, like, right now, um, are, are you getting much interaction with clubs? Are you having meetings? Like? Yeah, for, yeah, there's a bit of interest, but, like, they, I think they closed um, meetings off due to throughout the trade period. Okay. So, yeah, hopefully they build back up. Gotcha. Interesting. Soon, but it's only a week and a half out. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, just fingers crossed. So they're just over Zoom, right? Yeah, yeah, over Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, okay. What, what's that experience been like for you? Do you find that scary? Nervous? Yeah, yeah, I was like scared at the start because you get yeah. like a text message from like, really? yeah, et cetera. And then they say like, yeah, we want to catch up for a Zoom meeting. Then you get given like Q&A questions you've got to run through. So yeah, it's just, yeah, going Is it, it pretty quick? Like quick, um, short questions? Yeah, or? yeah, they're pretty short, but some can lead on. Yeah, okay, interesting. For sure, but depends what they're about, pretty much. But yeah. yeah it was a great experience. I'm guessing by the, like, after the first one, you're probably a bit more relaxed yeah, yeah. with it, and you can sort of prepare yeah, for you, it a bit yeah, like you Yeah, you've leased back a bit, but yeah, you've just got to read through yeah. club history and stuff, and yeah, hopefully... Club not history like, and stuff? Yeah, really? yeah. They asked, like, um, 
what do you know about our club and stuff and cool yeah you don't want to say nothing to yeah say. yeah <laughs> nah, good chance to sort of get on the front foot yeah and yeah make sure. a good impression that's interesting I, have there any i mean you can say as much as you want here because i understand like um you probably can't say absolutely everything but have you had any like weird curveball questions you thought geez that's yeah, Australia. one club had a psychologist on it, which is really yeah, like yeah, I found that like pretty confronting. For, really, like, yeah. trying to get into your mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just don't know what, like what they're thinking yeah. or what they're jotting down or, or stuff. What they'll but find. You just, you just <laughs> say the truth and yeah, no, that's hopefully cool. they like you. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Well, I guess who are some of the people you're talking to? Are they just mostly the recruiters or the coaches in this yeah, instance? Like? It's usually the WA recruiter. Gotcha. And then, yeah. Yeah, um, just let people base wherever they are. So yeah, yeah, there's usually a few, or it might only be one person. So gotcha. So even if they're WA based, they don't come to your house or anything. I'm not, I haven't had WA. I'd say that. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not sure. Oh, so but the recruiter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they'll still be on the call. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, do you? I guess I'm curious as well because um, never been in this situation. But someone who pours over the draft every year. I go on bigfooty.com, I look at all the phantom drafts, I look at Callum Toomey's phantom form guide uh, and I try and like immerse myself in the draft like a month out before the draft. Yeah. As someone who's potentially in it this year, how much do you look at media and, and what people are saying in the phantom drafts and is there temptation to as well? Yeah, for sure there's temptation to look at it but like if you're not, your name's not on there, it's not the biggest deal. You just have yeah. to do top 25 and... True. Yeah, top 40 but, and you know you're probably not sitting within that top mm. like 25 bracket so yeah you just like hopefully no you've had a good season and yeah just hope for the best i guess but yeah the dr- those like predicted drafts don't bother me at all yeah then as someone who's done a few predicted drafts they're horribly inaccurate yeah. there's, no, there's literally no point especially after yeah. like that top 20 yeah. yeah it's all unpredictable after like yeah the top players go i guess so yeah. anything can happen i guess for sure for sure lenny this is probably a good good one for you um what, how do you see Jack's uh, draft range? Yep. In, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think I can see him going around pick 40. Um, yep. I also say that because key defenders, they just don't grow on trees. And yeah. Again, for the year that he had this year, um, I think he could look be looked at around pick 40. Um, and look, there's probably a lot of clubs out there that probably would be interested in taking someone like himself on. For sure. And the other thing that... I think would endear himself to recruiters, which I touched on before, is that he's just a sponge. You know, mm. he just wants to learn and he's always just willing to improve his game. That's awesome. I think, like, from what I can see, the rate of improvement is going to probably be one of the most attractive things about picking you up. Because, yeah. like, from where you've come from in 2019 to rank you so highly, like, Colts and a half back of the year, like, that's that's nothing to, yeah. to sneeze at. Like, that's yeah. a great, great achievement. So, I think, yeah, you'd surely be looking at something like that, in particularly considering. You only played half a season. Like everyone only played half a season, so yeah, um, sure. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool, man. Um, do you have any preference about where you want to go? Anywhere, I think Melbourne yeah. Club just like the lifestyle and experience. It's the home of footy, I guess. Yeah, so ending cool. up there would be good, but yeah, I'd happy to go anywhere, honestly. Yeah, okay. So you don't have um, any preference to stay no, in WA? No, no preferences. I'd be be great to stay in WA with your family, but yeah, yeah. What do your family think, though? Do they... They're happy for me to chase yeah. my dreams, so, yeah. That's cool. Wherever I get the opportunity, just grab it with both hands. And yeah, that's cool. I think I've seen a lot of uh, examples in the past drafts where, like, the kid's happy to go play in Victoria, but then the mum is, like, yeah. bawling when they get drafted. I can think of one. Freo drafted not too long ago. That was a particularly bad case of that. Yeah, Harley Ballick. Um, yep. I think there was one last year, I'm thinking. Josh Worrell, I want to say, went to Adelaide from Victoria. I think you're right. I think it was Joshua. Uh, yeah, right. and his family just really didn't want him to go. But then there's no shame in that. that that's a very common didn't thing. Did get held back for a year? Cause yeah. Well, because he tried to get traded yeah. back, but then GWS were at that point where they were bleeding like that guys they'd taken every year. So McCarthy just happened to be the one they decided to take a stand on and yeah. refused to deal anything. Which worked out for Freo because we were offering two first rounders. We ended up getting him for a second rounder or something instead a year later. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um... Interesting question. Who are your who are your mentors at the moment in terms of uh, like going through this year, preparing for the draft? Is there someone that's sort of always been there with you? Sort yeah, of sure. I think it's just your family. They're always by your side, and they know the journey you've had and yeah. like where you've got to now. So yeah, probably just your family. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Nice one, man. Anyone um, at like Claremont or anything in particular? Jordy Smith, who looks after all the Colts and Futures boys, been really good. But I think just 
like all the players that like she's been such a welcoming club to go to this year and mm. even just getting to know all the coaches and stuff like just texting them about anything you've got problems with or yeah there's just always someone to go to around the club or at home that's good to hear that's good to hear that you got that support network i i guess one sort of question before we start to wrap up i'm curious um obviously there's so much uncertainty with this draft more so than any draft like you said like like Lenny said as well, 50 to 65 picks is probably yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, there's obviously a, a chance it doesn't happen for you next week. Have you emotionally prepared yourself for what will happen then and, and what we'll do when yeah, that happens? Yeah, for sure. We got plan what training on Monday, so yeah. that just goes throughout up until the draft. And if it doesn't happen, then yeah, there's you're always back there. So yeah, that, that'll be like yeah. challenging, of course, but hopefully be a train on at an AFL club if yeah the draft doesn't work out so yeah can you elaborate on the train on thing because some people might not have heard much about that particular plan for this yeah year i'm honestly everything. not sure what's going to happen i think clubs may take on up to four players in january hmm. yeah just to give them a run for a few weeks so okay. yeah that, interesting be that. yeah is that the case is it they need like from yeah, january is it yeah yeah so hi for a hypothetical sense like west coast or Freo could have him train with their club throughout january and if they like what they see, they, um, they're able to snap him up. Mm. But also, if it doesn't happen, Claremont's not exactly a bad waffle club yeah. to be at. I mean, they just had three of yeah. their teams in the grand final. And with the players they're getting back, they'll certainly be making another push for another grand final. And obviously, if Jack keeps improving, he could be uh, playing senior uh, WAFL football with Claremont. For sure, for sure. I think, I don't know if you'd agree with this lady, this seems like one of the best years it could be to potentially miss out yep. because clubs are going to be looking at this draft thinking we have a lot less information about these kids, a lot less data. There's going to be a few diamonds in the rough that potentially slip through. Yep. So I, in, in by that logic, they're going to be looking next year at a potentially a mid-season draft yep. and they're going to be seeing who are the kids that were good enough to make it last year that just slipped through. Yep. And so I guess you'd agree like yep. this is, far from like the end if, if it doesn't happen next week uh, oh. obviously we've got our fingers yeah, and cro- sure. toes crossed for you yeah. uh, that'd be awesome but oh but WA has also had a great recent history of mature age draftees you, know, you have to look at Timmy Kelly yep. Marlon Pickett um, Nathan Broad for those who don't know he was taken as a mature age yep, that's and right. it can also be a really good thing as well like you know he can probably Jack here can probably get some experience against bigger bodied forwards. For sure, yeah. And also, if he's training with uh, the Claremont senior group, you know, he can learn tricks off, you know, the Claremont key defenders, but even learning tips off like Kane Mitchell, Jai Bolton, mm. you know, about their sleep patterns, about what it takes to work in the gym, uh, the extras required. So, he's, in my opinion, I think he's got a win win situation coming up. Yeah, even awesome. state footy might be around the corner again as an under 19s yeah. competition. So true. Yeah, again yeah. to play that. Yeah, that would be cool. That um, that'd be something to gun for as well. Yeah, that'd yeah. be a good chance to like have a WA 18, 19s championship. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a nice like experience yeah, for, sure. for you. Mm. Hopefully, play senior footy if it doesn't all work out, and then midway through the year go play for your state. So yeah. That's good, man. Because that would have been something that probably would have sucked a bit, not being able to play for WA, because you don't yeah. get the opportunity once you're in the AFL yeah, sure. seniors. So that's like your last chance to really do like a state of origin, represent the state. Yes, yeah, it's where the best talent all goes. So yeah, that's cool. Form there. And, and Len reckons we're a good shout to win this year, so that would have been yeah. good too. Yeah, well, the team this year would have been crazy. So. Yeah, well, yeah. I think in defence, we would have had yourself, Chappie, Denver. Yeah, Blake Morris. Yeah, true. a few players like that in defence at least. So Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a shame to see that that because um, a lot of those players will probably be drafted. But then next year, uh, what does next year look like? Do you know, from the, in terms of draft oh, year, oh, gee, mate, I'm struggling to still get on with the 2020. Yeah, fair right enough, off. fair enough. Yeah, um, so I put you on the spot there. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, but again, probably sounds very cliche. If he puts his best foot yeah. forward, he will be a good chance. Maybe not this year, but next year. Yeah, so, yeah. That, that's good, man. It sounds like you got a good head and shoulders. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like you've sure. prepared yourself for for all possibilities, which I think is healthy and. Yeah, I'm not just talking shit when I say, like, there's going to be opportunities next oh, year as well, absolutely. either way. So. Yeah, I understand that for yeah, sure. So, whatever that's awesome. happens, happens. Yeah, that's great, man. Where will you be watching the draft? At home. Yeah. yeah. I might have a few friends around, but yeah, nice. fa- just mainly family. So. Yeah, chuck their camera on just in case. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll take your one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> True yeah. footy exclusive. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. No, I always wonder about that. You see footage of kids. Um, 
get the moment they get drafted they're yeah. just recording it but it's like how do you know when it's going to happen you just leave the camera on all day isn't it <laughs> they get the call like a minute or two before it's announced is that right I know that's the case in other sports. I'm not sure if the AFL, the recruiters are called, we're about oh. to pull the pin on you. Oh. The, the reactions look genuine. Yeah. So unless they're calling yeah. the dad yeah. and the yeah. dad's flicked the camera on, the camera, mm. the, the reactions just look yeah. extremely genuine. So Still, even before way. the draft, you know where you sit and what sort of clubs are interested. So around the pitch, True. Yeah. they must. Yeah, yeah. True, yeah. yeah. Something. It's yeah. probably easier for the top 10, top 20 boys as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Know, but I mean, I've seen yeah. like ones in the 30s and 40s where that's yeah. like, it's so hard to predict where you're going to go. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah. That's cool, man. All right, well, um, I think we've just about wrapped up on the True Footy Podcast 66. Um, thanks so much for taking the time to, to come and chat to us. It's great to hear about your, your football story. And like I said, we'll be having our fingers and toes crossed for you um, sure. on is it Wednesday I think yeah the December 9th, 9th. And yeah. 10th for yeah. rookies so. lovely yeah true the rookie draft as well that's a whole other thing uh, uh, how many I guess it doesn't matter how many rookie picks they're taking because they've cut the rookie size list sizes down as well is might that be right? 100 you don't legit don't yeah, know yeah yeah wow interesting okay that's fascinating so yeah Either day, uh, we'll, we'll have our fingers crossed for you. So. For sure. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, no worries. And Anytime. thank you, Lenny, as well, for organising this and coming back on. And if you haven't checked out, we had Lenny on this week for True Footy Podcast 65. Bush is uh, a little bit of a socialite right now. His phone <laughs> will not stop going off. It's not my phone, mate. Isn't it? Oh. Mine's always... Actually... Is it me? I was only joking. I don't really oh, care. It might be me, actually. It was actually off silent for once. <laughs> <laughs> my so bad. It doesn't matter. That's all good. Um, yeah, thanks so much for your time, boys. And um, yeah, we'll um, catch you in the next episode. Thanks for having us.